Our goal over the next uh, 35 to 40 minutes is to discuss dental pharmacology. Now, you should know that my goal every time I teach is to make dental pharmacology clinically applicable. That is that we are going to review a lot of the theorems and academic principles that you may have learned in dental school, but we are going to be able to take those and make them clinically applicable at chairside Monday morning so that you can be a better prescriber. And that is to describe dental pharmacology in general. And it's very easy. Ultimately, dental pharmacology is understanding what happens when a patient takes a medication that you prescribe or administer. Very, very straightforward. When we put a drug into a body, what happens? And obviously we want to stack the deck in our favor. In the next slide that you see, uh, not all little blue pills cause the same type of effect. And so if we're going to prescribe a particular tablet for a patient, we want to have at least an understanding of what that drug does. Uh, with this slide, I'm simply getting that Viagra joke out of the way. It's hard to have a pharmacy talk without that. Um, <clears throat> but if you take a look at the next slide, ultimately, dental pharmacology not only depends on the drug, but it also depends on the dose of medication that you prescribe. And while we would all like what's known as cookbook medicine or cookbook dentistry, that one dose of a particular drug that works well in all patients, if you look at the next slide, the problem is that not all of our patients are created equally. So let's assume for a second that both of these gentlemen walk into your clinic. They're high fear uh, patients, highly anxious. They don't necessarily want to be there for the dental appointment. And so you're considering giving them some type of medication to relax them so that you can do the dentistry you want to complete. In the first case, with the large individual on the left-hand side of the slide, you think, well, this is a big individual, so I should give them a bigger dose than I typically do. And five times out of ten, you will be correct. Unfortunately, five times out of ten, you'll be incorrect. And really what we want to do, as with everything in medicine, is to mitigate risk. Uh, 